when you think GMO, you think scientist in a lab coat in a you know laboratory slicing and dicing DNA. We did not do that to get to a poodle, right? That's called selective breeding. That is entirely different than GMOs. GMOs are genetically modified. They take the good stuff from this plant and the good stuff from that plant and they put it into this plant and they get a cool GMO plant. Um, I'm honestly not really skeptical of GMOs. I think that they've done a lot of, a lot of good. There's been no real evidence that they're not, you know, that they're bad, but again, we'll get to that. So when we talk about GMOs, mind you, right? My, my background is security is in investigations and is in business primarily in those, those categories, right? I have an extensive background in science as it relates to health and fitness, but nothing this deep, right? So I'm going to stick to my swim lane when I talk about these things. So if you're a genetic engineer or a bioengineer of some sort, and you want to share your feedback in the comments because there just so happens to be a bioengineer watching this episode, like feel free, but I'm going to stick to what I know because I'm going to stick, I'm going to stay in my swim lane. My expertise is going to come in handy. GMO soybeans, for example, they make up 94% of all soybean plants in the United States. So all the soybean that's planted, 94% of it is genetically modified. Then there's GMO cotton. 96% of all cotton planted is genetically modified. And then the key, the most important one, here's the first word that I talked about earlier, right? Genetically modified corn makes up 92% of all corn planted in the United States. And if you're like, why is this bitch naming off random ass plants? Well, they're not random. And I'm going to tell you why. Here's the, here's the info. Here's the, the lay of the land, if you will. So those are big numbers, right? We're talking 90 plus percent of some of our largest crops are all genetically modified. Take that take that little fact, you know, fold it up and put that shit in your pocket because we're going we're gonna to pull it out in a second. But for now, keep it in your pocket. So moving right along. Now for the meat and potatoes. The first thing I want to talk about is corn, <laughs> okay? The United States is the largest producer of corn in the world. That's a lot of motherfucking corn, 90 million acres of it. To be specific, we have 90 million acres of just corn. Now, after corn, there's sorghum, which I'm probably saying wrong, which is a cereal crop. Side note, if you ever purchase bird food, right? Like the bird seeds to put in your bird feeder, like I have, um, I made the mistake of letting some of that bird seed kind of hit my very nutrient rich soil because I have a garden in my backyard. And it started growing these this random shit, this like random stalks of grain. I had no idea what it was, but I left it, right? Because it's kind of in an area that um, I don't really have anything planted. I have some rose bushes back there and a rose arch and my bird feeder. So I let this shit grow. I ended up using Google image search and it was sorghum. So just know that the bird seeds that you are feeding your birds or putting in your bird feeder are potential, they're, they're actual seeds. They could potentially grow into things like sorghum, which is a cereal crop. So just so you're aware, so we have 90 million acres of corn. Now, we don't keep all of the corn that we grow, right? We obviously trade it. We trade it to other countries. 45% of all of the corn that we grow is used for ethanol. It's not used to be the ear of corn that you buy in the produce section, right? 45% of the corn that we grow is, you know, turned into ethanol, which I'm going to talk about how that happens in a second. So that's 45% of all of the corn. Now, what about the corn that we keep? What about the corn that we don't trade? Well, 40% of domestic corn use is for livestock feed. So that's the shit that's feeding our like cows and pigs and chickens and shit like that. There's also a term called FSI which is food, seed, and industrial. Some of the images that I'm going to be sharing and some of the and some of the things that I'm going to be talking about if you are reading the blog post later or if you're reading the reference list later is going to mention FSI, which is kind of how the USDA kind of lumps everything together in terms of where our corn is going. 60% of domestic corn is used for FSI. So 40% is going to livestock feed. The other 60% is going to food, seed, 
and industrial. I'm going to assume that when I see industrial, they mean ethanol, because based on everything that I read, that's kind of what it points to. So, corn. How do we get ethanol? How do we get ethanol from corn? And the process is probably exactly as you think it is, but there are two different types of millers, right? These are going to be the factories that you see next to like corn fields. And if you've ever, now I was stationed in uh, good old Great Lakes when I was in the Navy and I had taken a road trip at one point to drive back to New York, which is where I'm from. And I passed a lot of cornfields. If you're from Illinois, Indiana, or anywhere over there, uh, and it is this god awful smell that you get from cornfields, from corn, from the from the cornfields themselves, but from the factories next to cornfields. And it's because those factories are doing one of two things: they're either dry milling or they're wet milling. So a wet milled product from corn becomes things like high fructose corn syrup and glucose, and dextrose, and starch, and corn oils, and beverage alcohol, and industrial alcohol, and sometimes fuel for ethanol. So wet milled literally means they're making wet products. So think of like, for me, in my mind, I think of like syrup, right? High fructose corn syrup, I just think of like a liquid. Dry milled, however, takes that corn and turns it into flakes for cereal, corn flour, corn crits, which I don't even know what the fuck that is, corn meal, and brewer's grit for beer production. So wet milled makes wet stuff, dry milled makes dry stuff. So 94% of our ethanol in the United States is produced from corn. We don't, I don't even know where, the, the other 6% comes from who fucking knows, but so 94% of ethanol in the United States is produced from corn. That's a lot of it, right? That's 90, 94%. 90% of the ethanol that we make, so 90% of the 94%, comes from dry milled, right? So dry milling is our primary process for making ethanol. So what happens is the dry millers grind the corn into flour, then they ferment that flour and it becomes ethanol. The byproducts are distiller's grain and carbon dioxide. So in my opinion, I'm pretty sure when that carbon dioxide is released, that's that probably that awful smell that we're smelling. I could be wrong. Wet millers, on the other hand, what they do is they separate the starch, the protein, and the fiber in the corn prior to processing any components into products such as ethanol. So they're going to take the shit that they need and whatever's left over, which in my mind I pictured like, like a mush, like whatever's left, they'll ferment. But it's nowhere near as much as what's produced for dry mill. So... Just know that 94% is going to come from dry mills and that like last 6% is going to come from the the wet mills. Or I'm sorry, the last 10% is going to come from the wet mills. And now if you're like, why the fuck are we using, why the fuck are we using so much corn for ethanol? Why is everybody, why is 45% of the corn that we're producing being used for ethanol? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked that because I wanted to take this time to explain my evil plan. Because the ethanol is used in blends with gasoline to create mixtures such as E10, E15, and E85. So E10 is like 87 octane, uh, E15 is like 88 octane, and E85 is probably the one that we're most familiar with because that's called flex fuel. And if you're like, okay, I hope you're catching what I'm about to throw at you. And then we look at the fact that corn is 80% of the grain market for global trade, right? Largest markets are Mexico, China, although that is the second key word. This is not the main point of why I want to talk about China, Japan, and Colombia. So corn is extremely important, and it's mostly because of the, these gasoline mixtures. As we're trying to go to quote-unquote biofuels, you know, we're producing more corn. As a matter of fact, it's been exponential with the amount of corn that we've been producing, the amount of corn that's being, you know, asked of us and that's being traded. And a lot of that is going towards cleaner fuels, right? We're trying to get away from using, you know, from from drilling for oil and we're trying to get away from, you know, other processes. Now, yes, there is electric vehicles and that whole lithium scandal. If people knew, maybe I'll do an episode on that too, But if people did just a little bit of research on how we obtain the lithium to make the batteries to then put in these electric cars, 
you would be out there driving a big old diesel truck. Mm -hmm.